Good Blessed Throwback Thursday, uh, March the 28th, 2024. The time being about 5.18 a.m. I greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. Doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. Doesn't matter whether you like me or anything that I say or do. Doesn't even matter what your uh, religion, I mean, what your, uh, your race, your creed, your color is. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like anything that I say or do. You got a prerogative. You got a, that's your prerogative. You got a uh, First Amendment right to freedom of protest. Protest against me if you want to. A freedom of speech. Speak against me if you want to. A freedom to gather together, associate, etc. But today what I'm going to do is uh, quote a couple of scriptures from the Bible uh, to answer the questions for some people and ask, that ask me, uh, am I afraid that the people here that I speak up against are going to take my life, uh, attack me? I done been attacked. I done lost my jobs. I done uh, been incarcerated all unjustly. I've been physically assaulted. But I'm going to go on a mission after y'all listen to this here. God sent me down here not to run, not to be afraid. And y'all will see why in a minute. I want to encourage some of the people that said that they're praying for me. That I'm fighting against all odds. Uh, they're afraid of me being harmed or killed because I speak up against the powers that be. I speak up against the evil ones, no matter what their nationality is. Let me tell you one of my favorite. I have, I mean, the whole 66 books is. But this is one of my favorites, and this would keep me going. Uh, in the book of Psalms, in the Holy Bible, the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 27, uh, I'm going to take you through probably verses one through seven. First, I'd like to say that I seek refuge with God from Satan, the rejected enemy, the accursed devil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though in hosts shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, I ha one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. Amen. 
we as believers have to remember God is not going to send us someplace uh, that we have to fear. Let me read this last one before I go out here on this mission. That's Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, the key thing, he's, it says, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It didn't say as I walk in the shadow of the valley of death, but it said as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. You know why I won't feel no evil? Just because God and his staff is with me and he had said as I walk through, that means when you said I walk through, I completed that mission through the valley of the shadow of death. Ain't that something? That's why I don't fear when I stand up against corrupted judges, stand up against corrupted politicians, stand up against uh, individuals that selling poison in our community, stand up against uh, individuals that's doing these drive-bys in our uh, community, stand up against the white supremacists, stand up against blacks that's misusing blacks with this grant money. I'm just trying to wake y'all up. You see, God allowed me to go through a whole bunch of things <laughs> that none of my enemies will be able to stand. But I'm going to leave with this here. I'm going to go out here while it's still dark and just speak about some of the dangers that's out here. But when you got God with you, you're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death and you don't have to fear no evil. Ain't that something? taking a scroll down through Charleston, Missouri on the southwest side right now. Uh, what they call the hood. This is Vine Street. Vine Street is a good street. Uh, I always make my rounds, you know. Uh, I never give nobody no heads up. Uh, I always try to uh, be an element of surprise. But I just want to make a few rounds and say a few things uh, to try to wake a few people up. Uh, as you heard the two scriptures that I read, uh, that ought to tell y'all why I'm not afraid to come out here by myself. Uh, when you on a mission from God, you're not afraid of anything. And what I want to try to awaken some people up about, uh, don't let people tell you something about Raymond Lewis Ivy without you doing your research. Uh, you see, one thing about Raymond Lewis Ivy, you know, I was out in the world once upon a time. You see what I'm saying? So when I was out in the world, uh, I'm subject to do anything out in the world. But once God changed and turned me around, I didn't do the things that I did in the world no more. You see, I'm, I'm gonna give you some heads up now. Now, a lot of the individuals said God called them to preach. You know, people tell me God called me to preach. You can't tell me what God called me to do because God told me what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to be an ambassador. 
uh, to go out into places where other people are afraid to go. To go out to places where other people you have to pay to go out and do the things that I do. But you see, I want to I wanna show you something now. Uh, white supremacists is not just the, the, the only enemies for blacks. You see, some blacks is enemies for blacks. Uh, and if you look at my YouTube videos, you'll see who those are. But I'm going to tell you something, and some of people is not going to like it, but some of the biggest crooks, some of the biggest thieves and robbers is the ones that be behind the poor pit. If the shoe fit, where? Well, but they be behind the poor pit, and the first thing they'll take you to is Malachi. Would a man rob God? Now, if you listen real close to them saying, would a man rob God? Here's you coming in uh, and you can barely pay your rent. But when you put a dollar in the collection uh, plate, they'll tell you, uh, you need to be more. You need to do more than that. You need to put a little bit more in there. God don't like stingy people. But let me tell you something. And I want to waken up some of y'all here in Southeast Missouri. You see, I, I don't belong to any church anymore because I done seen so much corruption. Even with some of my family. Most of them with my family. I'm talking about the Ivies down here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County. I ain't got to name no names. But they done broke up churches that Bishop Winfield put together. The, the church is just crumbling down. Change the names. But ain't, that ain't what I'm here to talk about. Now, I'm going to tell you, I took my daughter to a church with me. Uh, and she heard the preacher. I introduced the preacher to my daughter. Most of the people, or just about all the people in the uh church knew my uh, daughter with the exception of the preacher because I think he's from another country and he don't live here. He live in St. Louis. But uh, I let him know that and let the people know that she asked me one day and she ain't but 17. She said, Poppy, I want to go uh, on one of my days off or when uh, uh, you go, I can go if I'm working in the evening. So I took her and, you know, I give this, gave this pastor a lot of respect like I used to do with T.D. Jakes. Used to. Used to do with Clef O'Dollar. Used to. Joyce Myers and all the rest of them used to. But this preacher, if God called you to preach, God ain't going to have you to do something <laughs> that a groomer would do. You see, you first uh, tell my daughter, after one of the services and we was going back to eat, uh, I wanted to give you something before you leave. I'm downtown area now, y'all. Y'all familiar with this area? I'm gonna go on down this here way down towards the Mississippi County uh, Sheriff's Department making sure they ain't killing nobody down here. If I can hear some uh, hollering then, I'm gonna have to call the State Highway Patrol or the feds. Uh, because the city and the uh, uh, the county, they working hand in hand together. But anyway, he give her $20 cash. Then uh, I was talking to him one day. Y'all know what this is. It should be the uh, uh, Mississippi County Morgue. But it's the, uh, let me see so if y'all can see it a little better. Mississippi County Detention Center, death, death row. That should be death row there. But anyway, uh, 
the next time uh, I was talking to him on the phone and uh, I said, yeah, my daughter uh, enjoyed the service. She want to go back with me again. And and uh, I happened to go do something in the house and I left my daughter with the phone and uh, came back. And, you know, uh, she, she had talked to him, but I came back and got the phone and while I was finna end our conversation, uh, my daughter phone ding. And after hung up, uh, she said, Papa, he just cashed out me $15. Now he gave her 20 in the church. Uh, then he gave her, uh, ding the $15. And then one other time he called her. Then, when it hit the fan with me a couple of days ago, well, she went to church Sunday, Saturday, hon, uh, my oldest daughter, and he wasn't there, and somebody else preached. I'm over in some of the other projects. Somebody else preached, and he called her Sunday, and I didn't know he had called her. Uh, but I was asking her something and she said, Papi, I'm talking to the pastor. It, it, he's not our pastor. But, and, and, you know, after she got through, I said, what pastor? And she told me. I said, what did he call you for? Uh, I, I, he said he was just calling because uh, somebody told him that uh, he she came to church and he told her, well, you know, I'm not, I wasn't there this time, but I'll be back next week. And I told one of the members, because at the time, what I was going to tell him, uh, it wouldn't have been godly like. But I told one of the members to tell him, I think that's inappropriate. When they finally got it to him, uh, just, uh, let me see, a day or so ago, well, uh, let me see, uh, two days ago, he called me at nighttime. He said, brother, uh, uh, such and such told me that how you felt about, uh, and if I just want to say first that I apologize. I said, uh, and I ask you to forgive me. I, I said, you know, I accept your apology and I forgive you. And I asked him, do you think that's appropriate for a man to call my 17-year-old a preacher at that twice? You used to call me, but you stopped calling me. Give her money, sending her money. I said, do your wife call the men in the church? And he, and you didn't laugh. I said, I, I told him, I said, I don't see a damn thing funny. I told him just like that. And I didn't. Uh, and he said he tries to, and when he see the Lord give him his spirit, he see people that need something and uh, uh, he act accordingly. I told her, my daughter don't need a damn thing. My daughter works. She's been working since she was 16 years old. I said, I took my care of my daughter from birth. You see what I'm saying? I said, you ain't no church, no organization, and nothing did a damn thing for my daughter. I said, before you did this with my daughter, I said, somebody else had told me they didn't like the fact you call uh, their wife and send their wife cash out. So I know his wife don't need no damn money because she's a director of nursing and he got a job. I said, do you think it's appropriate for the, a male preacher to be calling females? And then I find out one of the preachers that used to be his preacher from St. Louis too, he's finna marry one of the sisters from here that's in the church. So you didn't have your damn mind on saving no damn souls. You had your mind on them sisters. But my two daughters is 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 bright enough that if you trying to groom them, you see what I'm saying? And that's what the law enforcement would see. You grooming because you're sending it to these females. I I I can't, I, you know, you couldn't explain to me 
And then when I was trying to talk to you, you over talking me and I told you, don't, I, I, I won't say anything else. Cause you didn't like when I said, do your wife call the men since you call all the women? Do your wife send the money, uh, cash out and give the men money? He laughed at that. I told him again, I don't see a damn thing funny. You see what I'm saying? And I didn't see a damn thing funny. I seen what you was doing was very disrespectful. My daughter's never been to plenty of churches since they've been born. In a damn time, no damn man from the church called my daughters. Or oh, ain't no man secretly uh, cash in my daughters. You see, this is happening and people is not being aware. You know why they ain't aware? Because most of the people, I ain't gonna say most of them, some of the people, some of the parents is out here getting high every damn day with their children and they not paying attention. It's a Nick Road that's locked up now that used to be the the uh the squ uh, a squatter next door. Praying on the young girls, coming outside with his shirt off, looking at my daughters, and I had it on camera, and I sent it to his parole officer, probation officer, and they finally put his ass in jail. But the people in the streets here in Charleston, Missouri, they so much at me. They don't give a damn about this guy. And this guy just got out, out of the pen. And guess what? My daughter just showed me he back in, just got locked up again on the 25th of this month. You see, everybody behind these damn poor pits, I don't, I don't give a damn if they do call themselves bishops, preachers. I don't give a damn who said they anointed them. If God ain't anointed you, then I don't care who else anointed you. It's wickedness out here, not just the Ku Klux Klan, not in the, just in the courthouse, in the police department. Black folks have started fighting and, 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 and killing each other, selling each other drugs. Why these damn preachers is ripping your families off, laying with your, your, your kids. See, this man couldn't explain nothing. He, I told him he showed me the other side of him when he got the laughing. You the, I don't see a damn thing funny. But I did what I told him. I said, since you thought it was funny, I said, do you know who Gabriel and Michael is? And I told him just like this here, Gabriel and Michael whooped Lucifer's ass and kicked him out of heaven. Now, if any of y'all don't like what I'm saying, if you so religion, you don't like what I'm saying, don't listen to it. But you will sit there and listen to and praise a damn preacher or a bishop or a superintendent. Y'all give them more credit than you do God. That's why people don't go to church today. Peace be still.